you've heard the story of Gautam, where for many a year the incumbent lord, with God at his side and men at his back, did toil the land to put potatoes in sacks. Till one dark day, about the month of March, whilst counting the cost of a bad year's starch, the lord fell ill, with no successor to name, and fearing the wrath of his ancestors' blame, he hastened to place someone in line to pick up the pieces he'd leave behind. And so to the mansion three did come, the promise of glory, a future for one. was an odd chap. Lord Moore? Ever since our school days, a prudent sense of entitlement. I remember a game he used to make us play, where we would glue shillings to the floor of the stationery cupboard. When the cleaning staff came in to prize them up, we would shut the door, lock it, and turn off the lights. When the squealing stopped, we let them out because it wasn't fun anymore. I'm terribly hungry. You're disgusting. I'm sorry. You heard. I have known the Lord since we were seven years old. Don't go getting ideas, mumble crust. How dare you? Oh, please. Now, everything I've done has been off my own back. The first seeds I sowed were the first crops I reaped. Nothing has been given to me. I've done it all myself. You do make me queasy, you really do. And that's just the smell. Careful, soldier. My apologies, good company. I encountered a sincere bout of diarrhea. It's the symptoms you see. The symptoms? Why, yes. Did you not read the postscript on the overleaf of your invitation? Terminal bowel polyps. Just three days to live. Good God. Blimey. Goodness. It's a shame. As a child, I ate copious amounts of raw potato peel. <laughs> the things we regret. If it weren't for Kennedy throwing all that peel down the chute near the swing, I may never have chanced upon it. I do enjoy the swing. Oh, yes. Quite exhilarating. Yes. 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 Quite yes. Absolutely. Yes. O'Reilly would push me on weekends if I'd been good. Oh, it is much more fun to be pushed. Without a doubt. Yeah, agree. It's, it's my favourite. <laughs> oh, goodness, I'm hungry. Yes. Absolutely. Kennedy has been useless of late. I must chase him up. Who is Kennedy, sir? Kennedy is the cook. Problem is, I haven't seen him in about two and a half years. I hope he's all right. An awfully long time. Mm, terribly long. Quite. My lord, if I may be so bold, as you've not long to live, how are you to elect a successor tonight? You may very well not be so bold! Impertinent! Hang him up! Tickle him by his toes! How dare he ask us questions! I'm in shock! So I'm called the fire brigade. She's gone into shock. Is she okay? Absolutely not! Three pails of water, warm flannels in the leaves of an arbitus. I'm sorry, what? Quickly, it's the only way! The only way? Yes! What's going on? I'm okay! She's okay. Thank the heavens. Absolutely. Will someone fetch her a cool glass of water? Absolutely. Now, dear guests, I have something to show you all. A number of pots. Pots? Six pots from a multi-pack of ten. Where are the other four? The other four? Yes, sir, the other four. From the multi-pack of ten? You said six, or from a pack of ten. A multi-pack of ten? There are only six pots. Yes, sir. No. Well, yes. No. Allow me to explain. Our delightful host has bought a pack of ten pots. A multi-pack of ten. This evening he requires only six. The other four lie redundant, perhaps in an outhouse, a barn, maybe in the attic, or a small subsidiary apartment which the gentleman owns, but only uses on weekends when folks come to stay. What's more, buried inside one of these pots is a potato. Goodness. What in the depths of hell's the point? If you wish to succeed me here at Gautamore, you must prove yourself worthy. 
Select the pot concealing the potato. Lucky dip. Quiet. Like at the fair. Quiet. Oh. Best of luck, chap. Well, here's the damn nothing. No potato. Oh, rotten luck, oh, chap. What are you doing? Didn't I mention? What? Well. Well, what? Well, well, you know. No, I don't know. You know what? Uh, you know. What do we know? We don't know. Don't we? No. Allow me to explain. Look, it's very simple. I can't leave spoiled berries when I'm gone. Oh, this is ridiculous. Oh, don't be such a jester, chap. What do you mean, don't be a jester? Well, what the Lord means when he says spoiled berries I is know that what he meant, but he can't Are be. you a Christian? Of course I am. Then you have nothing to fear. Stupid is the fool that dies by the blade. Proverbs. No, I just made that one up myself. Rather good, don't you think? Absolutely. Thank you. Stop! What is it? All of this, it's a farce, a true farce, and I feel awfully queasy for it. Well, I'm terribly sorry, dear Don't lady. be sorry, my lord. She's being hysterical, just like my mother after a sugar cube. Carry on, sir. Perhaps we are being too cruel. Well, I would agree with that, sir. Uh, quickly, sir, step two. This one's feisty. Righto. Yes. My lord, this Shush. is barbaric. Oh, my. Listen to the lady. Sorry. I'm terribly sorry, sir, but what do you expect me to my hand? Never care for a squealing loon. I cannot do it. God knows I cannot do it. What is it? Sir, I'm afraid there's something I haven't told you. Well? My lord, I have a mild allergy to raw potatoes. By God. It's true. You poor thing. Quite. Now hold your horse. What is an allergy? Yes, what is it? To be horrendously honest, I'm not entirely sure. I saw a terribly progressive doctor in the United States. Oh, the United States of America? And he seemed to think I had an allergy. It's all the rage in the Americas. Are they expensive? Maybe I should get one. Well, I can't say I'm overly surprised. You've been acting like a man on edge all evening. I have. With hindsight, yes. Absolutely. Oh. Sir, you are funny, you really are, but you're not really going to... Come on, chap, turn around and close your eyes, just like school. Good God, man. Fifteen years of gala evenings, grouse shoots and internships, does that mean nothing? Not now, sir! Especially with a beautiful lady present. Oh, thank you, my lord. Uh, careful, dear lady, lest you lay an egg. Oh. Where is he? I'm over here! I'm running away. I'll not die, coward. Huzzah! We've got him. What on earth is he doing? I believe that he's uh, singing, my lord. Singing? Yes, he's definitely singing. Well, what on earth is he singing? I think that it's uh, a religious song. Good goodness Christ on earth. Next thing you'll know, he'll have charcoal on his face, a tambourine in his hand, and a herd of horned cattle round the back. Amen to that. Right. Fix bayonets. Just like we did at Waterloo. I must say, I'm terribly hungry. Yes. Yes, you're absolutely right. I, I don't imagine Kennedy will be back this evening. No. No, I imagine you're probably right. Has it really been two and a half years? Quite. To the day, in fact. To the day? Yes. The same day the cat died and the great Aunt George was arrested for being a queer. Dear lady. My lord? I don't suppose you'd do me the honour of joining me in the fields? The fields? Quite. Sir? The terrible truth is that Kennedy's little assistant O'Reilly was responsible for picking the potatoes. 
But when Kennedy left, he packed O'Reilly up in a little case. I haven't seen either since. Oh, how terrible. Quite. Though I do believe he was given an orange and a small glass of tap water. I imagine the tap water spilled everywhere. Yes, perhaps. How terrible. Where is the little case with the little assistant now? Well, I do remember Kennedy echoing something about leaving O'Reilly in the attic. But I have a bad back and a terrible phobia of pictures of my mother, both of which will be aggravated in the attic. So we must forage for food in the fields? I'm awfully sorry. How splendidly medieval. <laughs> Quite. There don't seem to be too many potatoes. No. I had a dream once to turn this into a quinoa plantation. But once a potato farmer... Always a potato farmer. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. Till death do us part. Oh, dear lady, I love you. I want to marry you. Spend the rest of my life with you. Dear lady, I want your babies. Four of them, all men. They're to be of respectable height, handsome appearance, and a gentlemanly manner. What's more, I long for a dog. Perhaps two. They're to be proud and obedient, named Nolan George, after my Christian pretenses and my sorely missed great aunt. Oh, but my lord... What's more, you'll prepare my supper every evening for when I'm out the shower. Boiled on a Monday, mashed on a Tuesday, dauphinoise on a Wednesday, baked on a Thursday, and fish on a Friday after three o'clock. Oh, but my lord... What? What is it? Are you warm, thirsty, hungry, cold? Listen to me. What? Listen. Yes? Listen. Listening. You have but three days to live. What? Three days. You said so earlier. Three days. How could we possibly marry? I... But... Well, one thing's for sure. I shan't be dying now. Before I had nothing, but now I have you. Oh, but the polyps, sir. The what? You can't stop them. Can't? Sal, you're all confused. Oh, would you like a nap? A bed? No, no, I'm fine. Dear lady, we must elope. Quickly now. What are you doing? What does the matter? Keep up. I cannot elope now. You're right. Tonight, when the clock strikes 12, we shall find each other by the old birch on the east side. Be not a second late. I shall prepare a small picnic. <laughs> what would you like in your sandwich? Perhaps cucumber and cheese? My lord. But you don't like cheese? Well, of course I like cheese. Oh, thank you God for that. All sane people eat cheese. Twelve o'clock. Dear lady, it's time to elope. Are you awake? Dear lady. Sir, you are going to die. You cannot run away from that. I'm sorry, what? Eloping would only make it harder to say goodbye. Dear lady, you're right. We mustn't run. We must stare at adversity in the face and then fight him off. You don't understand. You cannot have me. We cannot elope. Well, I can't leave you all on your lonesome. But I shan't be. Why? What is it? What haven't you told me? My father has a man in mind. A man? A man from the village. My God. Quite. What's his name? Height. Height? Well, he's frightfully tall. How tall? Quite tall. This tall? Uh, taller. <sighs> That's all very well, but why him? Well, he's small in mind and hurtful to look at, but a man all the same. The most a woman can wish for. But that's what I've been trying to tell you. You can have me. You will have me. But my lord, I cannot marry you. Lady, I will tell you one more time. I am going to marry but you. But my lord, I don't even love you. Don't you dare say but that. I don't. Don't you dare say I that really to me. Don't. I really don't, and I cannot listen, marry you. Listen to me, lady. Come here. Stop. I don't love you, and I never will. You have some foolish nerve, girl. And three days later, the Lord did pass. In a chorus of coughs and emasculating rasps, he died all alone at Gorta Moor. But for three rotting corpses he killed just before. And as those three did not return home, 
villages did rumour in histrionic tone. Such was the fear these tales conjured, that up to the mansion nobody wandered. And so to this day the dead lord rules, a passive observer to three cold fools. And no one questions the dead lord's claim, better be a pawn than a player in the game.